A lot of graphics cards coming out today are in a higher price bracket than they were a couple of years ago. And especially when we look at RX 470s, RX 480s, and then the subsequent 570s and 580s, they were really good value for people who wanted to get into PC gaming in the mid-range level and get good FPS, especially at 1080p. But recently there have been huge deals going around on RX 570s and 580s. They're being offloaded by miners, and I myself happened to pick up two RX 580s for extremely good price. And these prices were about 42 USD each, and this made it an exceptionally good buy. And it got me thinking, well, if you were looking for an upgrade and you already have one of these cards, or if you wanted to get into PC gaming and get really good FPS out of your GPUs, would it be a good option to Crossfire two of these RX 580s? Well, today we're gonna to take a look at these two GPUs in Crossfire against a single card, and also compare it to something like a 1660 Ti, which is a very popular choice on the new market in terms of a mid-range graphics card, then we're gonna see if Crossfire is indeed worth your money. But of course, first, these graphics cards, of course, are looking a little bit dirty. So we're gonna give them some tech, yes, loving. But instead of just showing you guys the B-roll, we're just gonna give you the before and the after. Here's me talking from about probably 50 centimeters away and probably like 10 centimeters away from the car. Yeah! So the good news is, is that there's not much good news, except you've got some RGB on the side of both these graphics cards. Now we just finished up the Crossfire tests and the power consumption was quite high of course with Crossfire and that was going across 192 watts for the 1660 Ti, got to 61 degrees. Then the single RX 580 got to 63 degrees. I got 230 watts total system draw. And then we had 63 degrees yet again on both cards, but the fan speeds were a little bit higher at 57%. So it seems to like that temperature, at least on these RX 580s here, of sitting around 63 degrees in a 24 degree ambient C environment. Now the power consumption on both RX 580s ended up reaching about 420 to 430 watts it was averaging out there. So it does use roughly 200 watts more than a single RX 580 from the wall. And this is on a pretty good power supply. I'm using the HX1500 uh, Platinum. So it's kind of like a best case scenario here for the cards in terms of power consumption. But let's get on to the best case scenario for this crossfire in these five games. So we tested out here today, F1 2019, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Strange Brigade, Tom Clancy's The Division 2, and also Far Cry New Dawn. And I think Shadow of the Tomb Raider is probably the best case scenario for this GPU where it scored 95 average FPS, and then versus a single card, it got 53 average FPS. So the Crossfire was working quite well in this game when we cranked max settings at 1080p. The 1660 Ti, of course, gave out a very solid score with 74 average FPS, but the minimums on the Crossfire ended up being 30, which was weaker than a single card. And this is one problem, we'll talk about that after we talk about all the benchmarks here of Crossfire, but we'll move on to the next best case scenario, and that was Strange Brigade, where we got 145 average FPS, 65 1% low and 60.1% uh, low versus 114 on the 1660 Ti, 90 and 89. Then move over to a single card, 81, 58 and 55. So despite it having a lot higher average FPS, its 1% 0.1% lows were marginally better than that of a single card. Moving over to Tom Clancy's The Division 2, 1080p Ultra settings, preset, Saurus on DX12, getting better results on a single RX 580 than we were on two RX 580s. So we got 44 average FPS, 35 and 31 uh, 1 and 0.1% lows versus 50, 40 and 35. And then we got 71, 52 and 32 on the 1660 Ti. Moving over to Far Cry New Dawn, the scaling really wasn't that good in this particular title 
where we had 69 average FPS, 52 minimum versus 92 and 60 minimum, and the 1660 Ti was getting 94 and 61, and getting obviously a better result while using a lot less power. Indicating that the RX 580s, when they are in crossfire, they run at lower clocks than that of the single card, which is able to reach its highest boost clock. Uh, the last title we have up here is F1 2019, and this was similar to Tom Glancy's The Division 2, where we saw at 1080p Ultra settings 70 and then 51 and 19, 1.1% lows, versus 64, 46, and 17. So again, performing worse than that of a single card, then the 1660 Ti was getting 90, 74, and 71. So these results pretty much show with Crossfire, it's really not worth it in 2019. I mean, you can get better results than a single card, and I guess Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Strange Brigade show that the scaling was good, but it's still not uh, anywhere near double the FPS you'd get of a single card. Also on that note, when we look at uh, going across different titles, we sometimes got worse FPS than that of a single card. The 1660 Ti, of course, being a single-end solution, being out there on the market for 280 USD, is not a bad play in terms of its power efficiency and the FPS it gives out. A single RX 580 in the used market, of course, just being phenomenal value for money and giving out some really good FPS, especially if we drop the settings here today, but the reason I wanted to max those graphical settings was so we could not run into any CPU bottlenecks. As for the 4GB of VRAM on the RX 580, at 1080p it didn't present really any problems, except for maybe F1 2019, when we see that the 1660 Ti is doing comparatively better with the 1% and 0.1% lows than it is in both the Crossfire and the single card setups. So looking at those results, we can see it's honestly not good at all for Crossfire. And SLI as well, NVIDIA's kind of shied away from that. And the reason being, these technologies, at least Crossfire, I believe it started in 2005. And at the time it was like, wow, we can get more FPS, we can double up our GPUs and have a better gaming experience. But it wasn't until after it came out, there was a lot of reports of stuttering, micro stuttering, and a lot of people just said, look, this technology is not working as good as a single GPU. And then of course they went to high speed cameras and they found that yes, there was indeed stuttering. And then AMD subsequently introduced a thing called frame pacing, which did help smooth out the problems. Nvidia at least in 2013, at least with the GTX 700 series, they made the GTX 780 and that was like this massive big GPU die single end solution. And so that's when Nvidia started to shy away from SLI. And since then we've seen this trend with massive single GPUs because I guess companies like AMD and Nvidia are too afraid to really focus on Crossfire because it requires a lot of extra driver development in terms of getting the games to work right. And as we see in the titles here, Crossfire ran worse than it did with a single GPU. And then the games that it did work, we weren't getting anywhere near 100% scaling from two cards. But to further complicate the matter, Crossfire and SLI also had its fair share of problems outside of games where driver issues would cause flickering screens and other sorts of problems that would just make it frustrating for people on these setups over a long time period. So it's easy to see why both these companies have sort of shied away from it. I mean, at least with the AMD side and using Crossfire this time, it was really easy to get working. You just put both the GPUs in, install all the drivers, restart the machine, and then double check in the Wattman software to make sure that the Crossfire is enabled. You also should make sure frame pacing is turned on, but even then, in a Unigine heaven when I was doing the power consumption results, we could still see that the frame meter was showing some very odd results, and it really just left me here scratching my head. Though it was pretty cool to see that there was the Crossfire logo that you could turn on, so if that particular game or application supported this technology, it'd let you know in the top right hand corner that it's turned on. But now I'm just going to give it to you guys straight, and that is, when it comes to Crossfire or SLI, you can extract extra performance, especially if you're doing what I did here today and getting the cards for really cheap. But I'd only ever recommend doing this if you played a single title and you knew that that uh, game supported Crossfire or SLI. Uh, so for instance, if you're just playing Shadows of the Tomb Raider, yeah, Crossfire works pretty well in that title. And if that's all you really play from day to day, then yeah, it could be worth your money and time. But if you're playing a variety of games, especially like I do, I like to play different PC titles here from time to time, I wouldn't recommend Crossfire whatsoever or SLI. I just think it's too much of a headache for gamers who want to play a variety of titles. But at least with the PC gamers I know and myself included, we play multiple titles on the PC. So 
I guess the majority of people in 2019 couldn't really benefit from SLI or Crossfire, but it doesn't mean to say that it's useless, it's just its limited use case scenario. The five titles I tested here today, I just randomly picked them, but they're all pretty much what would be considered AAA titles in that they're released from big game developers. When it comes to indie developers or smaller titles with companies from lower budgets, you can pretty much guarantee that SLI or Crossfire isn't really gonna work properly at all. Now I know there's also people out there that'll tell me you should mod the config files and in particular titles you can get Crossfire or SLI to work, but really when it comes down to it, I do hustle here on the channel. I do sell PCs locally to people and I would never tell someone to do that. It's just a waste of time, especially when you get a driver update or a game update. It's gonna completely ruin all those previous settings. And that's about it when it comes to coupling two GPUs together in 2019 with PC games. It's really something that's getting less and less popular. And the reasons are obvious, as we said before, even with those 1%, 0.1% lows in those titles, even when it was working properly, it still was giving a less desirable experience. So going with a single end GPU is gonna give you a lot less headaches than going with a two GPU setup, or even in that case, sometimes you can get three or four of these things working. So you could expect even more headaches. But with that aside guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button for us. Also let us know in the comment section below what you think of dual crossfire setups and SLI. Do you share the same thoughts as me or do you think differently? And on that note, I'm also going to be giving away these two RX 580s in the comments section below. I did promise this in the previous video. So all you have to do to enter is hit the like button, stay subscribed, and also drop a comment in the comment section below where I'm gonna be using a random comment picker to pick out someone. And then this is worldwide. I'm gonna message you directly and then ship the GPU out to where you are. So two RX 580s up for grabs internationally, and they also had some tech yes loving. So you can rest assured that, that thing's gonna work better than you. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.